Alright, so anyway, I wasn't intending on doing another moto vlog with this particular setup after the first one that I did. Um, when I got home and I took a look at the footage, it just didn't look great. The sound was muffled. Uh, just not real happy with it. However, as the old YouTube adage goes, you're not shooting for perfection, you're shooting for a start. So that's what this is. This is a start. I'm not overly concerned with quality at this point. I'm just trying to find comfort, so just a comfortable space. Comfortable rhythm, comfortable routine, and uh, that's my goal going forward. Um, my goal is to do eight moto vlogs over the next eight weeks, which I think is a pretty comfortable pace, but uh, there was a bit of an issue with, uh, with a camera setup. So I ordered a new camera, but it's not going to be here in time, and I was afraid that it was going to create an issue with uh, holding my own timetable. So rather than chance it, and come in late or be really cutting it close with the next video I decided to just dust off the old camera and take it for one last spin so that I could have another video done and not jeopardize my my schedule so the next topic of today's motovlog is motovlogging itself which is Kind of a strange topic, but there's a little bit of a fluid story here that I want to tell you about. So, when I decided that I wanted to get into motovlogging, it was because I stumbled onto a motovlog. Um, I'm not entirely sure which one it was. I have a feeling it was either Bikes and Beards or Shade Tree Surgeon, because I've watched dozens upon dozens of their videos over the past couple of months, so chances of it being one of them are highly likely. But at any rate, I, I come across this crazy idea of motovlogging, and it and appealed to me quite a bit, because I used to do a lot of vlogging years ago, and it, it, it was something that felt comfortable, and it also felt like a great way to um, get involved in the motorcycle community and since I was going to be buying a bike and have since I thought that that was a very worthwhile thing to do so I looked into it and I started following a bunch of moto vloggers and everything was went pretty well it was kind of an interesting thing though because when you go in search of moto vloggers you find one of two types is what I seem to run into. So, the first type is your high follower count, big, busy, large motovlog channels. Your Chase on Two Wheels, your Yami Noob, your Walterific, your Shade Tree Surgeon, your Her Two Wheels, and the list goes on and on. You've got uh, channels that have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. And it creates an, an, an interesting dynamic where, you know, you look at that and you think, oh, little old me with zero followers on a brand new page, that's a really tall order. And when you start looking around, at least when I started looking around, I wasn't finding a lot of people that I felt like I could connect with on a motovlogging level. I mean, I can watch a Shade Tree Surgeon video, or I can watch a Her Two Wheels ver uh, video, and there is a definite sense of connection there. I can, I can relate to what they're saying, to what they're doing, the topics that they're talking about, and that, that's what keeps me coming back. It's very interesting. Same thing with uh, Bikes and Beards or SRK Cycles. But the, but it's completely different when you look at it from a perspective of, uh, bumpy, when you look at it from a perspective of um, 
finding peers to get into the community with or to build a sense of community with. So, you know, I'm not going to release a couple of videos and be on the same level as anyone that I mentioned earlier. It's, you know, we're, we're talking about a world of difference, uh, apples and oranges. And I think it's important when you start to build a community, it's, it's great to have a sense of companionship or a sense of connection with uh, your peers. I, I mean, I guess that's the best way to put it. So what I wound up doing was, start, I started searching out uh, motovloggers, and I had mentioned that already. And the first type were the ones that have lots and lots of followers, you know, the ones that are, that are very difficult to miss. The next group that I came across, which seems to do, seemed to dominate the results as well, were old motovlogs by motovloggers that either didn't stick with it or lost interest or just, I don't know, change, you know, their interest changed. So I was put in a position where I started following, or I started seeking out videos from these other motovloggers, and they were interesting videos, that the topics were good, and then I'd come to find out, well, the The, uh, the vlogger, the moto vlogger, <laughs> the moto vlogger either lost interest or just hasn't posted any updates in, you know, months if not years. So, it was a strange dynamic to be in where, on one hand, I've, I I'm looking for moto vloggers and I find these titans of YouTube. And on the other hand, I find people that have kind of abandoned channels and, for one reason or another, just aren't interested in, any, interested in it anymore. It's really difficult to talk with these chipmunk cheeks with this thick pad on my face smooshing in my cheeks. I'm trying not to say too many words with S's because I feel like I'm biting the inside of my cheeks. Whenever I try to make an S sound. So anyway, to get back on topic, the um, I totally lost my train of thought. So, what do you do? Where do you find the the source of the? up-and-coming moto vlogger uh, to build a community or uh, you know to build a community with because obviously you're not going to be able to just jump in the pool with the big fish and uh, and kind of be a part of the community so that's where I found myself recently and I stumbled onto motovlog.com which is a forum of all things uh, there's not very many forums around these days well there are lots of forums around, they've been around forever, but you don't see too many that are really active and jumping. Everything is switched over to social media, so... But anyway, I come across uh, motovlog.com, which is a forum dedicated solely to motovlogging that appears to be based in Europe. That's uh, look ridiculous without the lenses, but nothing the visor can't fix.